Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Carl Sarri and this is a video for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software and in this video we have you going to add a fake Northern Lights or Southern Lights. I think you can get the same effect in the Southern Hemisphere as well as the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I, I, I do freely admit that I'm not 100% happy with this end result it doesn't look as realistic as I was hoping for. Um, I followed a Photoshop tutorial that was on the cover of one of my magazines, a uh, digital photo magazine it was, um, and I've adapted it for Affinity Photo. Um, maybe the Photoshop does a better job of it or I'm just not getting it quite right um, because if we look at these pictures of the actual northern lights as you can see I think they're much more there's much more glow to them and the colors are a bit more vibrant um, but you do have that, that same sort of streakiness in some of these shots um, these shots are by the way are from pixabay.com which is a royalty free website and they're, you know, obviously they're more realistic because they are more realistic, they are real. But say, for example, this one here, if we look at this one, you do have like these green and mauve stripes, um, which is like the effect that I'm trying to copy in Affinity Photo following these, this um, Photoshop tutorial. So this is sort of the effect we are trying to get. So I will come back to Affinity Photo and as you can see I seem to be lacking sort of quite a lot of vibrance I imagine. I have tried adding vibrance layers and it will only take me so far. So if anybody has any ideas of how I can sort of maybe get that end result looking more realistic then I'll you know, take that advice on board. So what we need is a start image and again this start image which is this one here I got from pixabay.com I will add a, a link to that in the description for this video um, but you can just as easily use your own I'm not certain whether having a starry sky or clear sky would make for a better effect um, but uh, I liked this one because it gave me a lot of sky area to work with so we will start the tutorial by once you've loaded your main image is to create a new pixel layer above it and then come to the brush tool over here and we now want to select a color now the I'm going to be using a pink and green but as you saw from those pixabay images you do get some that are just green some that are just pink or so there's blues in there there's even bits of white so the colors that you pick is really up to you but I'm going to use the same settings that was in the um, Photoshop tutorial and the first color it was 251 in the red 190 in the green and 255 in the blue which gives you this pink color so now we just need a slightly bigger brush. It's probably a bit too big. I mean, obviously, depending on your picture as to how much sky you've got to play around with, is how big you want to make this image. What am I on? I'm on about 636 in size. Let me bump the opacity up to 100, and the hardness. I'm going to drop down to zero 
so there we go quite a bright pink there I'll just increase the size slightly it's a bit better so I'm just going to draw a sort of loop over the sky here we'll start that here and then just draw that over like that and after that we're going to just have a slight tinker with this let me come off the brush tool so I don't have this waving pink circle going around the screen um, it doesn't have to be you know too precise this arc or whatever shapes you decide to draw um, because we're going to be altering it and stretching it and what have you so it will not end up looking in this shape that much anyway so the first thing I want to do is to add a Gaussian blur filter so we say it's filter blur Gaussian blur and we want to come around the 80 80 percent mark so I've got 80.2 just to sort of make that a bit more hazier so I'm going to click apply on that now we want to add another blur filter to this so it's filters blur but this time we're going for motion blur and in the Photoshop tutorial he moved it up to 900 but there is no 900 in Affinity Photo the highest you can go is 100 so that is where I put it and the angle was I mean you can rotate it in all sorts of different positions but again sticking to the tutorial I went for the 90 degrees straight up and then clicked apply now if your arc here is for some reason touching the landscape below it you can always come to the move tool and just move it because if you had it ended up like this and it's going over the seats or whatever landscape that you had you can just move it up and out the way or resize it using the corners so I'm going to put it about there so I'll just come off the move tool quickly to lose that box um, you could if you want lower the opacity of this down depending on your personal tastes and how bright you may want this pink to be in the end picture um, I'm going to go for about 90% opacity on that so make sure that this pixel layer that is on the top is highlighted and then make another pixel layer above that so now we're going to do the green color now again using the Photoshop tutorial which I'm copying the green color was one two three in the red range two five five in the green and 170 in the blue which gives you the sort of lime green color and what I'm going to do is I'm going to again come to the the brush tool where is it brush tool so we have this green color and I'm going to lower the brush size down and I'm going to start over here near the edge and I'm going to draw a sort of straight ish but sort of I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit and come across to here and then I'm going to increase the size and I'm going to do a loop over come back around here somewhere reduce the size again and continue on with a, a sort of a straightish wiggly line over here this will hopefully make this look like the green lines coming from the sides are further away than the loop that is coming over here because it is bigger it will give it the perspective of being nearer to you so let me just get that there 
increase the size a bit do a loop over lower the size and then do that going over there now I'm just going to come to the move tool and I'm, I think I'll go up there this time um, yeah so I could always reduce this size slightly stretch it out that way there you go I'll leave it like that so you can sort of tinker with it, with it before you sort of get on to go much further in the video so they are just sort of overlapping like that um, and I will just lower the opacity a little bit on this one as well down to about again about 90 percent but you can take it lower if you wish um, so in this one we're going to add like before let's come off the move tool like before i'm going to add the gaussian blur which i'm going to leave at um, the 80 percent range and then what I want to do is, before I add any motion blur to this green, I want to duplicate this green layer. So I'll just right click on the, the layer and come to duplicate, or you can do Control and J. And then I'm going to add the motion blur to this layer, not the green layer below. So I'm going to filters, blur, motion blur and like before I'm going to leave it 190 degree angle click apply and then come to the move tool and I'm going to move this green layer up and above the one below it like that and I can um this is already at ninety percent opacity, but I might just drop this down slightly less than the the green layer that was below it, so I've gone down to seventy eight percent It's all sort of um hit and miss as to which options you use. I wouldn't necessarily suggest you copy my settings exactly is what suits your image and what it is you want to get out of this image um, so what I'm going to do is click and highlight the lower get off that tool of the lower green layer and I'm going to make a, another pixel layer in between these two green layers and what I need is for this what is currently white I need this to be black so I'll just bring all these all the way down to zero so we have green and black here and I'm going to make green the foreground color and then I'm going to come up to filters noise and then purlin noise and this gives you this sort of cloud type image made up of green and black now you could alter this however you want um, I'm going to leave mine pretty much as it is but just to show you that 100% will sort of make it a much sharper image and the zooming in and out is really just shows you how sort of um, the black 
areas are sort of coming and bust coming through the green and octaves are not 100% you know, this just sort of breaks it up again so a much sharper image so I'm pretty much going to leave it full on right at the end here and then just click apply just wait for that to be rendered there we go and then I'm going to add motion blur to this so that's filters blur motion blur and then, then you can actually see the effect of this now because you've got these very streaked green lines and black lines I should say again I'm going to leave it at 190 degree angle and click apply and then I will just lower the opacity down to about um, around the 70 to 80 range and then I'm going to change the blending mode of this to overlay so then when you have that streaky green layer now only trouble here is as you can see some of the, hopefully you can see this some of these streaks are coming over the bottom half of this layer um, the background so what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to this layer and then come to the brush tool make sure that black is the foreground color now and I'm just going to increase the size of this and just lower the opacity slightly no, hang on a sec no, lower the opacity I just want the layer mask to be highlighted so it's just the mask that we're painting on that is important otherwise I've been painting on the green layer rather than just the mask so oh the opacity for the brush is up here sorry I made a mistake the opacity for the brush I'm going to make it around the 50% mark and I'm just going to paint any of the streaks that may be going over my background area that should do just I'll get the opacity down just so I can sort of get it off the areas I want but sort of help blend it in a bit into the sky area where I do want the streaks hopefully you understand what I mean by that so there we have that complete and we come off the brush tool to get rid of that circle and I'll just highlight, highlight the overall layer again um, now if you don't like because I've sort of lost the pink layer here so what I could do I could click and drag this up to the top so it is in within the green layer rather than behind it uh, yeah um, and again if you don't like where it is now you could always reposition it or increase the opacity or lower the opacity just to give you a different effect um, yeah I think I'll leave that there I've lowered the opacity slightly and I think I prefer it to be in front of the green than behind the green as I had it so it's, again like I said before it's a bit all trial and error right so now what we want to do is not to make these streaks so obviously straight um, so what I'm going to do is if you click either the top layer to highlight it or the bottom layer it doesn't much way, matter which way around you do this but then hold down the shift key and click the bottom 
of these layers, all of the layers in between will be highlighted. Um, so this means when we make an alteration it will affect all of them at the same time. And then I'm going to come to the perspective tool which is part of this menu which has got the mesh warp tool as the um, default one. But if you come to perspective tool it will add this mesh area over the four linked layers and I can click and drag these layers in and if I want I can stretch these ones out a bit and you can sort of move them around to your heart's content. Let me just zoom out slightly so I can see this a bit better. There we go. All right, and then when you're happy with the how you've stretched it, just click apply. And as you can see, the, the streaks now look like they're coming sort of from a different angle from the center outwards rather than just straight up and down. Yes, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that, I think. So if you now click and highlight the bottom green layer, I'm going to change to the liquify persona and it will add this small mesh over the thing, uh, the, the whole image and I'm going to be using the liquify push tool, push forward tool. I'm going to lower the brush size and I'm just going to select an area say about here and I'm going to click and hold and push it just push it up so there's not such sort of too much of a straight line going on with this bottom of this green layer I'm not going to go too mad I've just done a few nudges here and there Hopefully you can see that okay. And then once you're happy with that, just click apply and it will bring you back to the photo persona. And then hopefully you can sort of see that we have this slightly jaggedy edge along the bottom so it's not, not so perfect for want of a better phrase. Um, you could use the mesh warp tool but I think um, using the perspective tool is a better option for making that change that I did earlier where I brought the bottom in and the top out. Um, so I'll cancel that. I won't repeat it. So now you may, like me, have, hopefully you can see this here, where I've sort of brought the bottom in, we now have an sort of more a very distinct line here and I don't have it so much on this side but it's more of on this side in this particular version that I'm doing where the sky you can see a definite join between this area of the sky where I have the effects and this area of the sky where I don't so again I'm going to highlight the bottom layer press shift and click the top layer to join all these together come to the move tool and then I'm just going to nudge it outwards like that and I'll just give this a little tweak out just in case there was a bit on this side so come away from that tool so so now that's that line is not visible and 
we are pretty much near the end of this um, you can group these together if you wanted to but I'm not going to bother with that at the moment I'm gonna click the top layer and then I'm going to add a vibrance layer um, so which is um, layers new adjustment layer and vibrance adjustment now this is sort of my attempt to try and get some of that much more vibrant color that was in the proper images of the northern lights um, if you come to the left you'll sort of take away the color but I'm going to come to the right and I'm pretty much going to push it as far as it will go I mean I don't know whether changing the blending mode or I didn't look into this before one of these might work quite well actually Sorry for this is a, something I, something I should have practiced before I made the video. Um, color no, this the light and yeah that's normal and light and does make it a bit more vibrant. I'm gonna go with light and and yes I'm quite happy with that. so I could now group these all together so with the top one highlighted and then press shift and click on the bottom one and then group together I could if I want then just to lower the overall opacity but doing that you do lose some of that vibrance which is what I was after initially anyway so I am not going to do that but you may want to on your particular image so basically that is the end of this tutorial so all you need to do now is to save it either as a an Affinity Photo format file or export it as a JPEG or TIFF or whatever you want but do remember to save it under a new name um, so you keep your original background image safe so thank you for watching and goodbye